these lights are very bright. I hope this doesn't mess up the video. Anyways, I don't have my glasses on either because the lights were reflecting off of it. I'm recording this at night is what I'm trying to get across. So if the lighting's weird, um, sorry. It's not like I'm monetized or anything because I don't have enough followers. <laughs> Anyways, I don't know. I'm just rambling. Let's talk about religious wars. And not religious wars in the sense of religious wars in general, but specifically religious wars in their context of the age of religious wars in uh, European history. Um, so before religious wars, you have the Reformation, specifically the Protestant Reformation, which the word Protestant splits into Protestant. Um, which kind of gives you some sort of clue if you don't know about the Protestant Reformation, what is going on. But essentially, to give you a very short rundown, the Catholic Church has become very corrupt through the Renaissance. It's become increasingly secularized, increasingly concerned with wealth and power and money and all those other things rather than what it's supposed to be concerned with, which is, of course, the Catholic faith. And there will be many challengers to this. You've got your John Wyclush, you've got your Jan Husses. Um, You've got internal challenges. You've got your Savonarolas uh, with Bonfire of the Vanities, all these other things. But all of these challenges will fail until a guy by the name of Martin Luther. Uh, he's Northern European. He is from what is now modern day Germany. Um, he is a monk within the Catholic Church, and he has some real issues with the Catholic Church, specifically uh, some doctrinal issues that I really won't get into here, like uh, – the authority of the Pope and uh, the miracle of transubstantiation and the Eucharist and confession um, and all these other things. Um, but essentially, he will present his grievances with this and then also his grievances with clear corruption in the Catholic Church in the form of many things, but mainly the selling of indulgences, which is essentially a get out of hell card with the payment. Which you might say, well, if you can pay to get out of hell, what's the point of the religion? And Martin Luther might say, well, that's a great point. Um, but anyway, so this will come to a head. 1517, Martin Luther nails his 95 theses, his list of grievances, to the Wittenberg um, cathedral door. Or he actually doesn't nail it to the door and he mails it to a bunch of people. But a much better story is that he very dramatically on All Saints Day goes and nails it to the door of the Catholic Church in Wittenberg, um, and it's done in Latin so that academics will read it because, of course, Latin is the language of the Catholic Church. It's actually the language of the Catholic Church for a very long time. In fact, if you are Catholic, um, you could probably talk to your grandparents, and they might remember actually going to Mass and it being in Latin instead of English. Um, but anyways, I'm getting off on details here because I don't have my glasses on, so I can't read my script, which is right over there. See my eyes go like that. It's because I'm trying to read my script. Um, now, Martin Luther can't be stopped with this 95 Thesis because of the invention of the printing press, which spreads his ideas all around. So the Pope must find some way to silence him. He thinks to do this at the Diet und Worms, which is spelled Diet of Worms. I'm well aware, but it's German. It's Diet und Worms, and it is... 1521 that that happens. And at that point, Martin Luther's out. Uh, he is excommunicated from the Catholic Church. He goes into hiding. He translates the Bible. And after Martin Luther's out, it opens the floodgates and all these other religions pop up. Um, the big ones for our purposes are going to be Lutheranism, Anglicanism, and Calvinism. All three of these in some way take uh, – What's the word I'm looking for? I don't want to stop this recording. Um, they take issue. There it is. Issue. What an easy word. They take issue with the Catholic Church in some way, shape, or form. Martin Luther has an issue with a lot of the theological stuff. The Anglican Church is because Henry VIII wants to get a divorce, and he can't because his wife is the aunt of uh, the Holy Roman Emperor who basically controls the Catholic Church. Uh, right along with the Pope, and then Calvinism is because they're just angry. Calvinists, I'm sure there's a Calvinist watching this right now, and they're getting angry. Calvinists have a lot of doctrinal issues with not just Catholicism, but other forms of Protestantism. They're going to be the big aggressors in this um, age of religious wars. Um, they're also 
where most American Protestant faiths come from as well. You're Baptist, you're Calvinist. If you're Puritan, you're Calvinist. Um, and at this time, uh, if you're Presbyterian, Calvinist. Um, and at this time in Europe, Calvinism is a religion that is really, really spreading. I'm going to squint real quick. You know what? Actually, I'm just going to do this real quick so I can see my script. Oh, great. I'm doing good. I'm following my script. Um, Calvinism is going to be the big religious uh, group in these religious wars. So what are these religious wars? They are wars that, at least on the front, seem to be about religion. We're going to talk about if they're actually religious wars or not. Um, i got a bone to pick with that. Surprisingly, I'm going to disagree with this assessment. Um, but it's going to be a time period, early 1500s, all the way up to, really, you could say the 1600s if you want to give it a century, but really from early 1500s. Um, all the way up to like 1650s, you're going to have these religious conflicts going on, um, whether it is, oh God, the Shimamal Lactic League. I'll put pronunciation on the screen. That word's impossible to say. Germans, no one can say it. Uh, or it is the French Wars of Religion or the War Three Henrys or finally the Thirty Years' War. All these wars are between Catholics and some Protestant faiths. Um, so let's just talk about the three that I listed, because those are the three that the AP test will probably ask you about, if it does indeed ask you about religious wars. Um, but first, let's, let's look at this from another lens. Let's, let's analyze, let's look at this critically, let's think about point of view and context here. These are all religious wars in the sense that the different sides of the wars are different religious uh, religions, famously until you get to the Thirty Years' War, in which Catholics fight Catholics, which kind of ends the religious wars. But none of these wars are actually religious. Sure, in the war with the Schmalactic League, um, I looked up how to pronounce it and everything. I just can't do it. Uh, it is Lutherans. Versus the Holy Roman Empire, which is Catholic. That is true. However, and you're going to see this time and time again, what's really happening here is the old conservative order of Catholicism is being threatened by these new social groups. Why do all these northern uh, princes in the Holy Roman Empire suddenly go from Catholicism to Lutheranism? It's not just that they had this great crisis of faith, although some are legitimate Lutherans. It is that they are trying to assert more political power. And one way to do this is to make a clean break from the Catholic Church so that they can keep more of their own funding. They can have more control over their peasantry, so on and so forth. Um, the next one, French Wars of Religion. What a mess French Wars of Religion is. Um, I mean, it's really great. French Wars of Religion has got it all. You've got love triangles. You've got gay cross dress and knights. You've got uh, murders at weddings. You've got backstabbing. You've got insane uh, fanatical friars that carry out assassinations. That, something for everybody. Um, if you like Game of Thrones, you'll love 30 years. Uh, excuse me. You'll love French Wars of Religions and the War of Three Henrys. And once again, Catholics on one side and not Lutherans this time. Calvinists, specifically Huguenots or Huguenots, if you're going to pronounce it in the English way, um, on the other side. But is it really about the religion? Um, it's easy to say no. It's easy to say that the ruling family of France, the Valois family, is feeling threatened by this new rising merchant class. And guess what? The new rising merchant class has a new religion. Calvinism. And you're going to see that fight between the Huguenots and the Catholics continue even into the age of absolutism. Um, so is it really a religious war? Probably not. It's probably about a ruling family worried that they are losing control and trying to find a way to rally forces. So they rally them around the one thing that is constant for most people, Catholicism. Um, and then the Thirty Years' War, very easy once again to say, oh, it's because – 
the Catholics, the Habsburg family, the most powerful family probably to ever exist in Europe, is trying to rid the Holy Roman Empire of Protestantism. And certainly they are trying to do that. But there is another way to look at this, which is the Habsburg family is encroaching on the rights of these Protestant faiths, telling them they can't practice their religion. And in return, many of these Protestant faiths band together because they see it as their chance to take on the Habsburg family, to upset the balance of power in the favor of these new ruling families. Um, and famously, Thirty Years' War actually ends with the rising new royal family, the Bourbon family or the Bourbons in France, who are Catholic, taking on the older, more conservative royal family that is the power structure at the time, the Habsburgs. Because once again, these wars are not really about religion. They are about gaining power. Um, it is not coincidental. Nothing in history is coincidental, as a side note. Uh, but it is not coincidental that as the religions of Europe change, the royal families also change. And these new royal families become the absolute uh, monarchical families that will dominate Europe for the next 100 to 200 years, depending on the country you're talking about. Um, so in closing, religious wars, you need to know them for the AP test, certainly, but also in the back of your mind, think about them from another analysis, which is really about what all wars is about, which is economic power and control of resources. I still don't have a sign off.